Hey, and welcome to Man and Just TV. I am Matt Roast here with Jessica Bun Bun. This is our reaction and review for American Horror Story Delicate episode seven, which was not gross at all. It was perfect for all <laughs> audiences. There was there was nothing at the end of this episode that made me want to throw up. Like what what was that? Like why? Listen, American Horror Story throughout the years, they have definitely pushed the envelope when it comes to gross out, disgusting things, things that make you just wince or want to look away. And I'm I'm pretty strong when it comes to that stuff. For those of you who have been here a while, you already know this, but if you're new to the channel, hello. I'm a former funeral director. I've seen some stuff when it comes to like mm -hmm. blood and whatever's going on. I have seen some stuff. But this episode, I mean, even I found myself feeling a little bit sick to my stomach by this final scene. I was just like... I'm not enjoying this season as much as I was when I first started. I said this in the last review as well, uh, but that was for a different reason, which is that it was just, it was becoming really repetitive. This episode, not repetitive. They brought in some new storylines. We learned more about Adeline, which is somebody that I have been wanting to know more about for a yeah. while. Like she's always sort of been this ghost around the show and around Dex and maybe why he just doesn't have any real character. And I mean, some of that did come out in this episode and I was really thankful for that. But like when we really got to the meat and potatoes of what this is about and it's like, baby eating witches for fountain of youth i'm just like this has been done like <laughs> there is nothing original about this and originally going into this the beginning when we first started watching i was like this story feels really like it could be really fresh and really new and now i'm here and i'm just like oh no i'm taking a big l on that this is not new and refreshing this is a story as old as time and fairy tales I'm moving into a different gear with this season now where I have, I tried to have my brain on for a lot of it. I'm getting now to, you know, Maisie Day episode of Black Mirror territory. Yeah, where but it's you just, like that I episode know. and I did not. See, the thing about this show is that I'm not saying that this is a particularly good season of the show, but it is moving into this like... It's so ridiculous and so dumb at times that I'm finding it strangely enjoyable. I, I think a lot of it is just like... I don't think it's a particularly good show right now, but it's a show that I'm enjoying talking about just because of the sheer insanity of it. And also, like you just set up, the idea that they spent seven episodes building towards some big grand reveal of what they're doing, and it's the fountain of youth. It's just like, really, guys? Really? Yeah, it really felt like they were building towards something that was going to be really unique. I mean, I love this show. Like, we've been watching it forever. Yeah. Like, yeah, there's some seasons that are not that great. There's some seasons that are just amazing. Like, but a lot of it always feels very unique and very, you know, kind of clever, something that, you know, I haven't really seen before, but yeah, a baby eating witches fountain of youth. This story is stale. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, we're, we're going to get a lot more into it. May, may, who knows? Maybe there will be more complexities that shine down. Maybe. But if you guys are joining this, be sure to join our Patreon because we have live streams over there every week. Guess what? We're going to talk all about American Horror Story. It's a great time. Thank you as well to everyone who Thank is you. supporting us over there. We appreciate it. Okay, let's talk about Dex. Yeah. Which we never really talk about, except sort of in the vein that his character doesn't really have a lot of depth from what we've really seen of him so far. Like, I've said that I've never seen this actor in anything before. You have. You've mm -hmm. said he's really great. I've seen some comments from you guys that are like, oh, yeah, check out this, check out that. This actor is really great. And I'm like, okay, I, I feel like he probably is, but that the writing for him, I was like, what are they doing with him? They're giving him nothing to do. He's so, like an empty shell of nothing. And this episode explains why he's like that. And it, it feels a lot more that it's all tied together in a way that I can look back at the Dex character now and be like, 
I am now understanding why he is just sort of the shell of a man for many reasons. There's, yeah. you know, what happened to Adeline, that she was pregnant. He was really excited. He went over to his parents' house. We're not going to talk about everything that happened over there. We all watched what we watched, and they erased his mind. And then when we've seen what happened to Adeline at the end, we don't know going forward until the next episode how much Dex really knows about what's happening or what has happened or what has happened to Adeline. He, he knew that she was pregnant and that was the love of his life. And seeing the life in him in this episode, I was like, okay, I understand why everybody likes Matt so much. He's a great actor. Yeah, I this is... This is the first time all season that I haven't been able to use that joke that Matt was sort of convinced by Ryan Murphy to do this yeah. because he had another show for him down the road. It feels like, okay, I still think it was probably frustrating for Matt as an actor to basically play yes. a blank shell for most of this season yes. because he's, he's capable of so much more than that. And I think this is actually the sort of role that he's best at. Because, I mean, Matt Sutri is an actor. He has played a lot of just incredibly likable people over time. And he's just got a very natural sort of charm. And you watch Dex in this episode, and you're kind of like, okay, this is somebody who you can sort of understand why people would want to be, you know, friends with him as a yeah. character. You know, he's a little bit impulsive, but he's trying to think of ways to make other people feel better. He's yeah. giving Adeline a puppy. He's, like, going in making these sort of gestures and i'm also just glad by the way that they've made it that dex is not really in on anything i just think that that was another trope that i was so worried about through all of this that it was going to be oh it is the controlling husband who's working with the witches who's got this like evil plan worked out and i mean unless there's something coming we don't know about yes we could say that Dex is a little bit of a jerk at times. He's certainly done some jerky things, but he's also clearly the product of a lot of trauma and a lot of things that, frankly, he doesn't understand. Yeah, he really doesn't. And if they have, you know, wiped his memory, is there some of it that he's maybe become privy to over time of what's going on with his dad, what's going on with his mom, what's going on with the witches and the babies and this fountain of youth and all of this sort of stuff that's going on? Yeah, I think it's a, we need a little bit more answers on that. Like we need yeah. a little more, maybe we'll get some of that in episode eight, but at the very least we can come out of this and be like, okay, now it's all starting to make sense. Do I still have a lot of questions here? Sure. Including for starters, why is still Anna being chosen as the person tied to all of this? Like we could argue that, okay, this is all tied to Dex's family, to yes. Dex's father. I think that's a fair argument. I think it is. I think it is too, but then I'm also sort of like, okay, it all feels this way. But then we saw Nicolette all the way back in the past when mm -hmm. Anna was being born. And yeah. then I'm just sort of like, really? You guys knew all the way back then that you were somehow going to play matchmaker for Anna and Dex or you yeah. had your mindset on her. It's just, it's hard for me to wrap my brain around. I have too much of a simpleton American oh, horror story for not your true. nonsense. No, it's not true. It's just, <laughs> this basically just, the show makes no sense a lot of the time. And I just, you gotta just roll with it. And that's what I'm trying to do. But I just, I just have so many questions. At least we got some answers on Ivy. I mean, we didn't really know what was going on with her. We'd seen her so very little. You know, we saw her as a nurse and then we saw her at the gallery and you yep. were kind of like, what is she doing at this gallery? And it's now it's more, uh, there's more of an understanding. This is the mother to Sonia and Adeline who are twins. And this is her, their mom. And she is sort of a, a head witch here, if you will, at this point that has been really going through all of this for all this time now. And she's got her two daughters, Sonia, who's all in riding that witch lifestyle till the end. And then you got Adeline who doesn't feel that great about what they're doing, that they are, you know, having these babies, getting these babies, using these babies to keep themselves young, that trading this life for youth is something that she doesn't feel that good about and she wants to get out of it. Yeah, I think that it's, 
a really interesting dynamic. And I'm very happy to, I'm going to just take and own a massive series of L's over the next minute or so, because there were so many (laughs) predictions. I got so terribly wrong. I think at one point I said that I thought Ivy was maybe actually working for the good people. Ah, As bad (laughs) as she turned out. Way, way wrong on that. I think, I, you know, there was also the, oh, Adeline and Sonia are clearly the same person. They're played by the same. I, yeah, they seem like it. You know, the whole their twins thing. It's so obvious and it's so ridiculous, but I, I can't help but laugh at it. I'm just like, of course, they're twins. Of course, Ivy is the mother, despite the fact that these people are all the same age. Like, <laughs> it, none, none of it really matters. But no, it's just, it does make sense within the construct of, okay, if we're going to have someone like Adeline who got away, here's how it happened and here's what the people did to her in return to all of that. And because there's a close family bond, like that makes everything a lot more intense. Like if Adeline wasn't family, like a direct descendant of some of these witches, like maybe they would have handled it differently. Like maybe there wouldn't have been the same level of heartbreak. I don't know. Well, and it's interesting too, because it seems like, you know, she is still somewhat participating in the rituals not with the babies but you know she's running this restaurant she's you know below ground still doing some of this maybe to keep them away or to keep you know everything still sort of at bay but she's made it very clear to Dax she does not want to have children and this is why and so once she finds out that she is I don't know why she put that pea stick in her mouth. Listen, like for all you ladies out there that have taken, been waiting for this, taking a pregnancy test, you take it, you pee on it, you stick it in your mouth. I was just like, what is happening? Like, oh my God. So gross. The whole episode was so gross. Then if you really don't want Dex to know about it, Why is it just in the trash bin in the bathroom? You didn't take it with you. You didn't, you know, throw it in like a public trash bin, somebody's wheelie bin. Like, I don't know what is going on here, but there were some things I was kind of like, none of this is making any sense. There were a couple. Don't put your pee sticks in your (laughs) mouth, ladies. Okay. I, there were a couple of things going into this video that I was kind of rolling around in my head. I was like, should I talk about this? Should I not? I was like, you know what? I, I think it, I'm pretty sure that Jess picked up on some of these. So I'm just going to take a step back here. So it's not dude talks about pregnancy things he may not understand. But I'm sitting here being like, I've never had any experience with the pregnancy test or anything like that. But I'm pretty sure you don't pee on the stick and put it in your mouth. Like, I've never heard that before. No. And even though it's like she's putting, like, the handle in I your mouth, care. it's just the same. Like, just don't. No. You don't need to do that. You can hold it in your hand. You can hold it in your other hand. I don't care if you hold it with your feet. Don't put it in your mouth. <laughs> I think that there are just times when American Horror Story, not just this season, but the whole series kind of leans so much into camp that they're just sort of like, at the end of the day, who cares? Because it's just (laughs) like, nobody's really going to take it that seriously. No. People are going to watch because of like the shock value. But here's a little bit of the problem with this particular season in it is that it has never really nailed the tone because there are times when it feels like this season has tried to be pretty serious yes. and has tried more to be in line with Murder House. If the entire yeah. show was really, really campy, whether it's on the camp level of like Coven, which I think is a little bit more campy than Murder House, or 1984, which was just pure on camp for a big part of it. I mean, not just summer camp, but humor (laughs) camp. But no, uh, I would be more than fine with them kind of dallying around with some of this stuff because it would have kind of been established in the world of the show already. But it's just like they've struggled the whole time with figuring that out in between the serious stuff to then Kim Kardashian being like, do you want an Oscar or a baby? Choose right now. And I'm just rolling my eyes out of my head. Yeah, it, this show has definitely not picked a lane. Like, are they going to be serious? Are they going to be a little camp? They're going to be a little funny as well, which is fine. But for that, like, they really did start this season where it felt like they were going to be a little more serious, that it was going to be a little more like Murder House, which is why I was like, beginning of the season, like, oh my goodness, like this, this could be the next Murder House. Like it's, <laughs> it's going so well. It's, you know, pretty serious. It feels like it's going to get really nice and dark. 
And then this episode where I was just like, okay, you guys are kind of just throwing in things to be shocking, to be shocking. Like, yeah. we'll briefly talk about what was going on at Dex's father's house. And I was just like, this feels like you guys are just trying to be like, how shocking can we be? What can we do with the mom? What can we do with the dad? Yep. What can we do with the witches that makes it so crazy? <laughs> what is this moment that everyone's going to be talking about? It just feels like, I mean, even as crazy as that was, that whole moment is completely overshadowed by the end yes. of this yes. episode when you know ivy and her sister and her best friend are all there they have figured out that she's pregnant and they're like you know taking the blood and putting it all over themselves and you know lighting the fire i was just like this is way more intense and gross and shocking than what was going on over in this house yes it a million percent was and i i just wonder this and that the last season of American Horror Story in New York City, which I don't yeah. even know how many people honestly watched because it felt like it went really under the radar. But yeah, it really did. Like it was still to me really a really good season, but it was also yeah. very serious and very sad, yes. especially the final episodes. And yes. I wonder if they went into this season maybe at first being pretty serious, but then they were like, you know what, we, we got to lighten the tone a little bit after a lot of that. And that's fine if you want to do it. It's just the execution isn't always there. And despite a million problems that I have with this season, and okay, it might not be a million, but I'm pretty sure I can get the 50. But despite all of those problems, I'm so invested. I still want to know <laughs> what's going to happen to Anna and her baby. Like, where do they go from here? Yeah, I, I don't know. Because the fact that she's in this sort of state where she thinks like she's going crazy. Yeah. Nobody can see what's happening around her. Dex is like, we don't, we don't know for sure what is going on with him. Is he just a shell and he just doesn't care about life at all yeah. anymore? Or because his memory was wiped, like he just doesn't really remember anything. Like there's too many things that are just gone from his personality. Like his, you know, it was just taken from him that he's just, he can't even really help anymore. And everybody surrounding her is part of the witches. So, I mean... How is she going to be able to really fight back on this? Like, I just don't know that there's going to be a happy ending for this. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it doesn't have to be. It's American Horror Story. Like, a lot of times you get to the end of this and it's not a happy ending. It's not a happy show. Yeah, and I think there's a good chance it could go either way. It's a weird thing now where it feels like Miss Preacher is really, like, the only potential light in the darkness. And it's... Interesting to me because I also, another L that I took, I thought that Sonia was being so nice to, to Anna in some of the earlier episodes that I thought, okay, maybe that's why I thought maybe Sonia and Adeline are the same person because maybe she knows and she's on the inside. She's trying to help now. And it's like, no, now you really don't have anybody other than Miss Preacher. And we don't even know much about Miss Preacher and whether or not she's good either honestly listen i'm taking an l on adeline as well i thought that she had just left and was <laughs> in hiding that was my theory that she was part of all of this and she was like peace out which i guess did happen but that she actually got away and that that's what happened to dex that you know she sort of faked this disappearance you know gone murdered who knows what happened to her and he just was left with no answers and that's why he was kind of the way that he was all right, here I'm gonna put on the tinfoil hat. I got a prediction for okay, the final all right, episodes all right. of the season. I think Anna's going to get some help from Miss Preacher, mm -hmm. but in the process, she's gonna learn more and more about how fabricated and how constructed everything when in regards to her life is, whether it be yep. her upbringing, whether it be set up with Dex, whether it be the Oscar campaign. And mm -hmm. what I think is gonna happen is I think she is going to find a way to potentially save her baby. And maybe even help Dex along the way figure out a certain part of himself. I think they're going to find somewhat of a happy ending, but I know there's nothing more that Ryan Murphy loves than to satirize and blow up Hollywood. So I think this show is going to end with Anna basically exposing all of Hollywood's nonsense, all of the stuff that Siobhan has done. Hollywood's going to go down in flames, and then they're just going to flee off somewhere, and they're going to be on an island again. Maybe not an island, but they're going to be somewhere happy and alone. 
I don't think they're going to be happy. I mean, they're not happy now. Like, we've said this uh, quite a few times in these videos. Like, I don't understand why Anna is actually with Dex. The Dex now. The one that we saw tonight in this episode. You know, happy, carefree, so in love, really charismatic, really charming. I was just like, okay, if that guy showed up, then I understand why Anna was just like, Hey, let's, you know, let's go. But the one that we've seen for all these episodes, I just, I don't know how these two go off to be happy anywhere. He seems like he's not capable of happiness anymore. I just wonder, and this is probably delusions, but could he be fixed? Like, is there a way to actually help could him yeah. at this point? Like, I, I want to... This is my pie in the sky stupidity for a show like American Horror Story that I know is not going to give me this, but it's just like, I would like some element of, of happiness here. You don't have to get, that's why I'm saying she cannot have the Oscar. She cannot have any of that. Her Hollywood career can be over and there you go. There, there's the sadness. Maybe Dex is going to be able to kind of figure out what's going on and he'll be together. They'll be able to get out of it because unless Anna has some sort of an ally, like I don't know how that happens. And everybody around Dex is also part of this, like his dad, you know. The, the woman who owns the gallery, I think her name is Talia. And yeah. It's just every, Sonia, you know, is his artist. Like, I mean, everybody around him is, is part of this. So they're both just in it and don't really know what is going on. One of the two of them has to figure it out and then tell the other person so that they can figure it out together. You guys only have two episodes left. There's only nine episodes in this season, yeah. guys. You got to get moving with yep. it. But th there's only two more. We'll we'll see where everything goes. But, you know, if you guys want more American Horror Story Delicate from us, just click that box right there. You can watch our most recent review. Mm -hmm. Once again, thank you to our patrons. You can join our Patreon for weekly live streams about American Horror Story Delicate. All of this delightful nonsense. We have a link to that in the <laughs> description below. Thank you for watching. We'll thank see you. you here next time.